Leisure Suit Larry 5. The fourth game of the Leisure Suit Larry series. And I say fourth because, honest to God, it was the fourth game. However, uh, num numbering at number five was part of the humor in the series. Now, this was released in 1991. You know, I was... Either in my... Uh, let's see, 1991. That was my... Either the tail end of my sophomore year or the start of my junior year in high school. So needless to say, I didn't get this until after I until I went to college. Now, this was the first one done in the VGA style. And it is the second game. I mean, it's set after the third game, obviously, but it is uh, the second game in which we have both Larry and Patty. And so we split time between them. Now, the overarching story is, of course, uh, underlying story is uh, somehow trying to find out the mystery of the corruption in media. In fact, it opens with a cutscene focusing on a mob meeting head by Mr. Big. With, of course, some obviously uh, mm -hmm. visuals that are double entendres and all that. You see, their they're subliminal market into the music genre is going well, but their uh, activities in the porn industry is not. So, after this meeting, uh, we enter into the first part of the story. See, Larry is, doesn't seem she's, he's with Patty right now. He is working for a cable company, well, cable channel, Porn Prod Corp. Or is it Porn... Yes, you know, they work with, it's definitely working with uh, the adult industry, so to speak. You see, in a meeting there, they're getting ready for their new television show. America's Sexiest Home Videos. And the idea for them is to get the sexiest woman. But the thing is, I want the right woman, and it's narrowed down to three ladies. So, they have the idea that they need a man to go out in the field to interview these women so to speak. But it has to be done discreetly. They can't know that he's interviewing them for this. And it has to be a man that the woman would be have to be so desperate to go down on him in an instant. Where can you find such a pathetic man? And then we cut to Larry, who is working at that stud at that company. Technically, he is in the process of uh, degaussing videos for the project. 
it is a process that's supposed to make all uh, you know videotapes fresh and new again for reuse uh, of course with them calling for coffee he brings in the coffee accidentally spills it on his uh, superior lap in which are the man heading the meeting gets the brilliant idea to have Larry go out and find these ladies and that's actually the first section of the game getting all you need together for this there's no going back Areas are pretty much self-contained. You can't leave the area until you achieve your goal in the area. Makes it harder for you to soft-lock this one. So get, Larry has to gather the three uh, files on the ladies and then be off. In a limo, paid for by the company with an Aerodor card. The game's attempt at copy protection. It basically meant that you had to uh, enter in the copy protected code to travel to your destinations, but only for Larry. Only for Larry. This also added a little variety to the game because you could pursue the three ladies in any order you wanted. Which also doesn't make sense because, well, somewhat, because pretty much most of this game takes place on the East Coast. So when Larry finally gets his ticket and goes to his first, t gets on the plane to go to his first destination, where all his dreams involve him and Patty. Oh, and yes, you, you definitely have to get something off the plane. That's important. Somewhat. And what happens is this. As you head down, as I, well, while Larry is cruising across the country, we join Patty at a dive in uh, and apparently Washington DC or somewhere near there because he is now talking or she is finishing a performance at a piano bar and she gets stiffed because the bar is a mysterious owner Julius has decided, uh, one, not worth the money, two, well, she's not worth the money because people are too busy listening to her instead of drinking. Where she gets approached by an Agent Desmond from the FBI, who's been trying to crack the case on all this corruption in the music industry. They have two leads, but they need an agent with certain special skills. i.e. highly expendable and that can infiltrate the music industry with ease i.e. Patty so she is off now after agreeing to meet and getting all her clearances and all that she is off to the location of two uh, certain individuals One in Baltimore and one in Philadelphia. I'm going to tell you something. Four locations in this game are in driving distance within one another. Plane might be faster, but it doesn't necessarily make sense, but this was the mechanic they worked with for the game. So after Patty gets all her stuff and gets 
you know, and her dreams are actually a little bit more vivid with her uh, interacting with certain well-known individuals of wealth. Two real, one fictional. Although nowadays I'd say one of questionable wealth. So now you have these sections actually alternate a little bit. Because after Patty heads off on her first mission, Larry heads off to his first location. Now Larry's locations are New York City, Atlantic City, and Miami. These can be handled in any order. And so can the two patty sections be handled in any order. Now, yes, I suppose this makes it so that most games aren't the same playthrough. You see, Larry is finding the three ladies who he must, quote, interview or audition. The lady in New York City, which is actually the farthest north of the three locations. Well, I'm not going to go into their names, but we'll, we'll, I'll refer to them by their first names. Uh, this one is Michelle. She likes wealth. She is a frequenter of the Hard Disk Cafe. A parody of the Hard Rock Cafe. And I've been to the Hard Rock Cafe in New York City. It was a very interesting place. It's still there. I haven't been in it in years. But as the Hard Rock Cafe is more devoted to music than that, and maybe some television of the air of the you know past eras a hard da disk cafe is more focused on computer stuff and we have a little bit of a moment with the maitre d with some uh, crazy comments and all that no. Oh. So, you know, stuff like that. Of course, Larry finagles his way to get in, but he can't get into the high roller area that Michelle goes into. Now, of course, this, t this is places being devoted to computers of all era type things and how mentions also how the old player pianos were early computer computers which it true is truth so larry has to make his way of course to that area and <clears throat> you know uh somehow show michelle uh, that he she's you know, he's worthy of uh, the undercover audition. And after a little bit of suggestive work with her uh, dessert, well, Larry gets what he needs as long as he has the camera on. His second stop is in Atlantic City, where he must go to the Tram Casino. He's looking for Lana, who is, uh, she does mud wrestling down there. So, of course, obviously you have to uh, first locate her, talk to her and somehow win her, o uh, win her over, which, so she'll give you information on how to, you know, have a game, uh, ha, you know, have a chance with her in the ring, and then a chance at uh, 
a rather <clears throat> eye-opening ending for the crowd. Of course, this means, of course, racking up some coinage in Tramp Casino. And before you say anything, remember that this was made in the early 90s before a certain person from a, a certain, finan uh, quote, financial person, business person, had any aspirations for political office. Although its record with the casinos should should have been a warning, but never mind that. So once Larry, you know, racks up the coins, he must go find her while she's skating on the boardwalk. This mind's getting roller skates at uh, Ivana's place. Hinting off the divorce that happened at the time. And afterwards, uh, we managed to talk to Lana and get into the ring and in a little freestyle grabbing thing where you have to, quote, catch parts of her while it's flashing around the ring from overhead. Uh, well... You end up getting that audition in. However, um, little Larry was not able to perform in front of such a crowd. And the final part is to go down to Miami for of Larry's sections is the third part is to go to Miami, get into a dentist office to meet a dental hygienist named Chichi, whose uh, legality is not uh, overly certain, or not overly legal. Believe it or not, you can give her something that will make it legal and make her really happy. But regardless, you still uh, manage to... Uh, convince her there's also a cheap little Easter uh, cheap little treat in there if you can undo her button that buttons under a lot of strain to which Larry then quote gets with Chi Chi and proves his lack of prowess in gymnastics too <laughs> Now that basically brings everything round for Larry's sections as he gets his three auditions. They aren't going to mean a hill of beans. And I'll explain why in a few minutes. Because now we got to focus on, on Patty's two chapters. Our two parts. Now the first part has her infiltrating a record company because this was at a time when there were still records. Although, with the advent of CDs and the phasing out of records, uh, that's going to handle one part of the problem. But, you see, Patty has to first infiltrate uh, I think reverse bias records, something like that. And she's supposed to pause for an audition. Now, of course, she's also supposed to find evidence. And uh, before getting into the recording studio, you can actually find that evidence in a gold record. Of course, once you get in there, you have to do this little uh, piano thing. It's not going to matter how well you do. The third time round, you play it perfectly. And then you have to success, uh, find a way to convince your mark there to uh, part with some evidence. And 
Uh, this is done by providing some fine alcoholic drink, which you can get at some point. Once you get that evidence, uh, it's off to... Now, once you get that evidence, then the other location, which is Philadelphia, at K-Rap Studios. As uh, this was done in a time when rap music was starting to become uh, an influ influ a factor in the music industry. See, she must infiltrate the studio get evidence of the man, uh, you know, linking it to the man behind everything, Mr. Big. Well, Julius. And getting all the evidence she can get, which includes a recording of another band, a rap band, Too Live, Too Screw, or Too Live Screw, one of the two, parody on two live crew. Of course, you must also get past uh, PC Hammer, a parody of MC Hammer. Of course, to get down to the recording studios, you have to uh, find, uh, you have to do it by a very cleverly hidden elevator, which you actually get into thinking it's a shower after having an accident with a copier and toner exploding everywhere. It ends up giving Patty a very convenient, questionable disguise. And of course, as she gets in the shower thinking it's an elevator, she ends up going uh, down, uh, I guess, a glass elevator around like a central courtyard area before descending into the studio area and giving every guy there work, working late that night a nice show. And it's supposed to be night. Don't ask me why. Well... So once she records that and then escapes from being trapped inside that studio, she takes all the evidence she's gotten to Desmond, Agent Desmond, and he proceeds to get it all together for the case. And he agrees that for helping her, for her helping them out, he would arrange for a. Uh, for her to play at a major function at the White House. Now, this is all those things that we've done, and how can we get to a major function in the White House? Well, we need a hero. And on the flight back to L.A., Larry gets his chance to be a hero. How does he do it? Uh, well, the Aerodork airplane is going into a free fall. Something happened to... Uh, well, they had to have a cockamamie reason. So, uh, Pilot's Union, things ran out. Pilot uh, has officially given up, or, you know gone on strike because he's a union man. Good union man. So the plane starts to do a downward spiral and they need someone to help. Well, Larry did sell flight simulator software door to door. Yeah, it's ridiculous sounding. And well, he offers to help, and of course he is as clueless as anybody else, but of course this is a Sierra game and a Leisure Suit Larry game, so it just comes to pushing buttons and managing to find the right one that says autopilot. And Larry saves the day. 
Not only does he save the day and save the plane, you know, save the plane and all passengers on the plane, one of those passengers just happened to be the vice president's mummy. The caricatures are pretty damn good. As it's obvious that the president and vice president are George W. Uh, George H. W. Bush and his vice president Dan Quayle. Yeah, they picked on them a lot. Somewhat. And anyhow, because the president, the vice president's mummy was on the plane, that has made Larry the big hero of the country at the time. And so they are going to have him at a gala, Tuesday night gala, uh, big hero dinner. Uh, that President Bush will not be attending. It wouldn't be good for his image. <laughs> Might have helped us. I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow. Lo and behold. Patty's going to be performing at that dinner. And of course when the hero of the hour walks in. And they are gladly reunited. A little bit. Uh, maybe a little bit to Desmond's. Uh, you know. Chagrin. And so they managed to have a moment. But also at this dinner is this really big gentleman. A gentleman whose uh, cronies have been funding uh, a political, a right wing group known as Kane, which stands for Citizens Against Nearly Everything. And he's going to be testifying at a hearing to bring an end to, quote, porn in the industry. Or, you know, all this in the music industry, but he's also, uh, he's enamored by Patty. And he wants to uh, have her be the host of a new show that he's been behind. As the hostess. Can you guess what show that is? But he's humming a tune that's familiar to Patty. And all of a sudden, everything falls into place. This is Julius Big, leader of the mob. And the man behind all the troubles in the recording industry. The man who helped produce Leisure Suit Larry 4. And then did away with the floppies, giving Larry amnesia. He pulls the gun out on her. Larry is quick to try and protect the president, or not the vi the vice president, by shoving his face into potato salad or something like that. That probably it was probably potato salad. They had to do it, you know, because of the whole joke about him uh, him not being able to spell potato. Which was all about because he had a uh, he was judging the spelling bee and uh, the card he got for the word potato had the had an alternative spelling on it, so to speak, and he was just trying to make sure is this the right spelling? Because he thought it looked wrong. Of course, you know we uh, anyhow. Uh, Patty comes to the rescue thanks to one item that she had for defense. And uh, lo and behold, we have the blast done on Big. He looks a little bit like Swiss cheese. He's captured and taken away. Larry and Patty are treated as her again as heroes. And they get a free weekend at Camp David. Joined by the vice president and his wife. They come across, of course, to the audition tapes Larry had made. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, we get an ending, you know, basically saying the status quo is still the same. You know, Julius got away scot-free. 
music industry is corrupt, however, the subliminal message market is gone because kids can't figure out how to play their CDs in reverse like they used to be able to do with the record players. Of course, K-Rap Studios gets bought up and turned into the into a video channel uh, with new VJs. PC Hammer is the first of many. And of course, the hearing on pornograph pornography and the music and the video industry is uh, forever in limbo as they are still researching. And that ends the game. You know, of these games, having parts of the game being able to be played in any order, I mean, you got six ways to go through Larry's sections and two ways to go through Patty's. It's sort of... It, to be honest, if you want to try them in a different order, that's about the only, or trying to get a perfect score, that's the only replay value this ha this game has. The story is not necessarily the best of the franchise. And I suppose it also add may you can add it in with the fact that Leisure Suit Larry Four the missing floppies are indeed missing, but part of the storyline of it. I guess that's supposed to make up for that. But I'll be honest, this is the least replayable of the franchise. It's a meh game. Somewhat makes it look like Leisure Suit Larry Six was an apology. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I've I enjoy I this game is enjoyable to a degree, but not that much because once you do everything in the game, it's you only replay it if you really want to replay through the series. But that's what I'm going to say about Leisure Suit Larry 5. Like I said, it's good to experience it once if you are a fan of the franchise. I wouldn't say it's a rush to play because it is so, it does fit as a standalone story. It doesn't necessarily feed into or off of any of the other games in the franchise. But it does come between uh, Larry 3 and Larry 6. But that's what I'm going to say about the game. I thank you if you've listened to me talk about it this long. And until next time, take care all and have fun. Bye.